Back at home, feeling misunderstood. In between these ears, ain't nothing good. Transition to something we've been talking about. Uh, it was one of my ideas, and we were both kind of disappointed at how some of our color cast games went. We never really had a close game, a buzzer beater type play to call. So I kind of came up with the idea, let's pick our favorite moments from sports history. We'll be able to talk about the moment at hand and then we'll be able to give our spin on how we would have broadcast the game if we were in that in that in those shoes. I get a little bit more practice as a broadcaster. We get to look back at some of the cooler moments that we can both remember in sports. And I brought the first one today. We were going to try and find a Summer Olympic one, but I, I didn't find one that I really liked. So I thought, you know what? My favorite broadcast that I've heard is the ending of Super Bowl 32. I know Super Bowl 32 is big in your mind with the Broncos. It's their first championship. Really cemented John Elway as one of the better quarterbacks of all time. First ever championship, too. Second. Second. Because uh, the Avalanche. But it was, it was back still, to back. Still, yeah. yeah. Um, but we'll talk a little bit about the history of the play. We'll get into calling the action. We have it on the TV here. So we'll, you'll get our actual, what our actual call would have been. And then uh, we'll, we'll get into the break after this. But this is going to be our first how it could have sounded. And like I said, we're doing the helicopter play and then the ending of Super Bowl 32. This took place January 25th, 1998, and uh, it was an interesting Super Bowl to say the least. You know, the Broncos were heavy favorites the year before and lost in the first round of the playoffs to the Jaguars. So then they come back this year. Jarrell Davis has a hell of a year. This was the year before he would rush for 2,000 yards. And John Elway, he's older, but I would say he's basically, he, he's a li he reminds me a lot of Peyton Manning the season before the 2015 year when he won the Super Bowl with the Broncos. Um, but they came into this game 14-point underdogs. Uh, the F Packers defending Super Bowl champions with Brett Favre on the other end, Reggie White, the Minister of Defense. I mean, as a Bronco fan, there wasn't a lot of people saying that they were going to win this game for them. No, because it was the legend of Brett Favre, and the, all the rumors were saying that John Elway can't win the big one. Yeah. It sounds very, very similar to a lot of people nowadays, but John Elway can never big the, win the big one, and I think, I think he, I think, I think, I think he was able to show the world why he was able to finally win the big one. I mean, it's, it was an interesting one because obviously the, the Bronco, the, it wasn't necessarily just him. It was number 30 TV also behind him. TV was a big player throughout the whole season. It's it, They're the yin and yang, basically, of the Broncos. It was those two, how far the Broncos were going to go, it was on the backs of those two. Yeah, and then in the game, they had the adversity. Uh, I actually, my parents have Terrell Davis's book that he wrote about, the, about his time in the NFL. And in the first quarter, he had a migraine where he couldn't see because he had the, the kind of migraines that he, he loses his vision. And there's the infamous highlight on the sideline of Shanahan. He's like, Coach, I can't see. Like, that's fine. You don't have to see. We're not going to give you the ball. But if you're not in the game, they won't believe that we're running. So you got to be out there. And they ended up scoring on that play. They were able to throw a little dump off touchdown pass. But, I mean, this team overcame a lot to win their first championship. And... Think about the other showings they had in the Super Bowl, getting blown out by the 49ers, getting blown out by the Giants. Not only had John Elway not won a Super Bowl, he didn't play well in Super Bowls. So this is kind of, this will pick up to, I think, the defining moment of his career and of this game. And then it'll go through and, and we'll give you the reaction that Denver had when they won this championship for the first time in, in Broncos franchise history. So here we go. All right, Broncos come to the line, third and six. Have to keep the drive going. We'd much rather have a touchdown here to put the pressure on Green Bay. They get a false start. Elway back. He's going to run. Finds a little bit of room open to his right. He's going to slide. No, he dives head first. Helicoptered around by a couple of Packers defenders. Looks like it might have been a miss, miss blocking side on Rod Smith there. He, he I mean, he, he, he kind of just let, let the, the, the corner loose. And, and, oh, my God, that could have been that could have been a bad injury for Elway. But he gets right back up. Oh, my he God. He popped right back up. He is in another dimension, didn't even hesitate. He just took the snap and then finds a little bit of room. Now turns hands off to Terrell Davis. R Davis able to wrestle his way into the end zone, and that's exactly what you want. Now he's going to give the mile-high salute to all of his teammates, Eddie Mack getting in on it, Rod Smith. Now the Packers unable to get close with a field goal. Yeah, TD, what a run, man. Right right into the end right there. I mean, L.A. got, got that for helicopter I mean, helicopter move to get us right in the end zone and, and, and good good old TT, good old Mr. Reliable, number 30, always finishing drives off right where they started. That's exactly what they needed. Now Brett Favre has to get his offense into the end zone. Not, it, not an easy task in this, against this defense. Pass knocked away, and that'll be it. 
they have upset the defending Super Bowl champions, 14-point underdogs, and the city of Denver can stand up proud. Their second major sports championship, first in franchise history, Pat Bolin and John Elway can call themselves world champions as a member of the 1997 Denver Broncos. What a moment in franchise history. Man, Broncos country is going to remember this forever. Sean Elway with the hands up, the strap loose, losing his mind, finally able to win the big one. Finally able to do it. And all the likes of Shannon Sharp, Terrell Davis, all those great studs with Denver Broncos, man. As, as the, all the reporters come running on the field, Mike Shanahan, Shanahan could not be more happy. He's finally got over the hump as well. We saw the tide of the game. We knew Elway wanted to make sure he put this game out of reach. We've seen him have fourth, fourth quarter heroics before. You think of the drive back in the 80s against Cleveland. That helicopter play on third down and six, a broken play. He was looking to make some sort of completion downfield and, and move the sticks. He decides, you know, I'm 37 years old. I'm going to take the reins myself. And he stumbled, rumbled, and bumbled, found his way down, helicopter, dove head first to get that first down. And that you can't tell me that a man wants to win a game more than that. And now he's being picked up by his teammates. Oh, man. John, do not lose that football. Do not lose that football. Uh, yeah. You better hold on to that for dear life. And make sure that's in a safe somewhere. Do not do whatever you do with that Super Bowl winning football. Make sure you tuck that away. Give that to your family, whatever it may be. Give that to your son down the road. Make sure you don't lose that. Now the question becomes, if you're a Denver Bronco fan, they won the one Super Bowl. Can we try and do it? Go another? back to back, baby. Yeah. Come on back. Winning one makes you a champion. Winning two makes you special. And I think Mr. Elway might have.